everyone, my name is Mary and today we're making New Mexico red chili enchiladas. For the meat I am using leftover turkey meat but you can absolutely use chicken. And for the sauce I am making it homemade using New Mexico chili powder. The chili powder you can purchase in a grocery store. If they don't carry it, you for sure can get it online. If you're not comfortable using the New Mexico chili powder, you can follow along this recipe using a can of enchilada sauce. Um, as far as the meat, I use turkey, but like I said, you could use chicken. You can buy the rotisserie chicken at the grocery store and just shred it up or you could throw a couple breasts into the crock pot in the morning. That way when you get home, it'll be ready to go and shreds really easy. So, put your aprons on and let's get cooking. The first part, we will prepare the meat. You'll start with two tablespoons of oil in a deep pot, a half of a diced onion, one tablespoon of garlic or two diced cloves, one diced jalapeno, and if you don't like spice, you can skip that. And you're just gonna saute for about one minute to get all those flavors incorporated. Next we're going to add one can of diced jalapenos. You could also do green chilies. One tablespoon of ground cumin. Two tablespoons of chili powder. And we're going to mix this up really well kind of blend all of these flavors together. And this chili pepper is mild. It's the store um, chili pepper, so you should be fine. Next, you're gonna add four cups of your meat. Now, again, I use turkey, but you can use chicken. One cup of enchilada sauce. And if you need more, add another. Two teaspoons of chicken bouillon. And one lemon squeezed. And all of these flavors are gonna break this down, so don't worry about this being kind of chunky. It's going to start shredding really nicely once this starts to steam. And your, your juice should be about this full. You shouldn't have too much. It's going to start breaking all of this meat down, so it should be plenty. Once this is all mixed up, we're going to cover this. Okay, so now we'll cover um, and put it on medium heat. Uncover after 15 minutes, and we're gonna start breaking this up again. We'll add a half a cup of water, just giving it some more liquid to help it break up. But you can already see it's breaking down nicely. And just kind of help it I just use the spatula and it, it breaks really easily. And you'll cover again and cook another 15 minutes on low. After 15 minutes, we're done. We're just gonna mix this up. You're gonna taste this and make sure it doesn't need any flavor or any more seasoning, I should say. So it's ready for stuffing. Now we're going to prepare our enchilada sauce. In a large skillet, you're going to heat up three tablespoons of oil on medium-high heat. 
Put in the entire package of New Mexico chili powder. And this comes in um, different heats, hot, medium, and mild. Four tablespoons of flour. And what I like to do is just sprinkle the flour kind of around the pan over the oil. What we're going to do is kind of, kind of saute the flour taste out of this. It's kind of like a roux that we're making. So once the oil has absorbed some of the flour, we'll add a little bit more oil to make a paste. But right now we're just gonna kind of brown this a little bit and get this all incorporated in the oil in the New Mexico chili powder and getting that flour flavor out. I just kind of go around the pan and make sure it's all incorporated. If you see white, you need to keep stirring until all of the white is totally covered. Now you'll see that this pretty much absorbed that oil and we're gonna need the oil for the roux. It's basically making a gravy. So once this is done, I'm going to push this over to the side and add a little bit more oil. So I'm adding about three tablespoons of oil. And then I'm gonna get the spatula and slowly put the powder back into the oil creating a paste and you'll see from the heat it's gonna start bubbling a little bit and it's perfectly fine it needs to still cook off that flour flavor we want to only taste the chili powder and this chili powder is nice and mild with a good smoky flavor, but you can buy the hot online. I saw that Amazon carries a few different brands. So now this is pretty much the way you want your sauce to be this nice thick paste. And you could see by moving it around, it's nice and thick. It's gonna brown up. Don't leave it in here too long because it will burn. And the longer you leave it, the hotter the flavor is as well. But it does burn quick. So once you get to this point, you're gonna need to add your liquid. And I'm using water for the liquid, but you can absolutely use chicken broth. But I would still recommend, if you did chicken broth, just use a little bit of the chicken bouillon, the crystals. So you can see it thickening here as the heat is absorbing all of that oil. And it's done. This You need it this color. It actually looks a little darker on camera, but it, it's it's not dark at all. You'll see once I put the water in, it's going to turn like a kind of a burnt orange color. So here I'm adding the four cups of water and I'm going to add about one cup at a time and slowly stir, taking a breaking up those flour chunks. Just go around your pan slowly. If you put it in all at once, it will clump up. So I like to do it a little bit at a time. And now, once all of our water is in, we'll start to add our spices. So I'm kind of just mixing this up. So all of those flour chunks break up. I'm adding just a dash of pepper your salt and pepper just do for taste. One tablespoon of garlic powder. And I just kind of go around the top. One teaspoon of cumin. 
one teaspoon of onion powder. and about a teaspoon of oregano. Now I use Mexican oregano, and that will be located where you're purchasing your New Mexico chili powder. If you can't find it in your grocery store, you can definitely buy it online. And again, this is basically a gravy. So right now, because we just added the water, it's very thin, but the hotter it gets, the thicker it's gonna get. So I let it sit for a little bit and then stir again. And now you'll see that it's thickening. So I just taste it and see if it needs any extra flavoring. And I'm adding garlic salt and a teaspoon of chicken bouillon. And you definitely do need these spices. Chili powder is kind of bland and flour is too. So you definitely want to make sure you add in these spices. And see how it's coming along? It's starting to get nice and thick. We're going to simmer this on high heat until it thickens to the consistency we want. And you got to keep it moving. Once it starts to boil, I kind of really pay close attention and watch over it because it thickens pretty quick. Like I said, it's just the same way you make gravy. And now I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt for taste and two cups of regular enchilada sauce. Now I got this tip from the pioneer woman, Ree Drummond, and I tried it in it made my enchilada sauce stretch a little further and it actually gave it a nice tomatoey flavor. So after I add it, I just go back in and taste it. Make sure it doesn't need anything extra, but now it's to the consistency I want and we're ready to prepare our enchiladas. So instead of frying the tortillas, I steam mine. I get 12 tortillas, put them in a damp paper towel in a bowl and microwave them on high for about one minute. So all of your tortillas cook at once. You don't need to waste the time frying each one. If you wanna do it that way, you can, but I like to cut corners and make my life easy. So now here I'm coating the bottom with enchilada sauce. And we're gonna roll our enchiladas inside of this pan. So I did a little extra sauce and I'll just fill these with one tablespoon of chicken. And once I add the chicken, I'll add the cheese. And at this point, if you do like onion, add your diced onion inside of your enchiladas. I'm not a fan of onions in my enchiladas, so I leave those out. Sometimes I add the um, black olives, but this time I'm just putting them on top. So I'm just gonna roll these and continue this process, pouring another scoop into the pan, dipping my tortillas in this, and again, rolling them. And you don't need to spray the bottom of your pan because it has this oil. The oil's gonna help it not stick. And if you're a vegetarian, you can absolutely do black beans and cheese. That would be really yummy. And if you're a vegan, you can use that jackfruit. Um, and follow along the exact same steps. Just make sure you rinse out your jackfruit. 
And if you've already made enchiladas and you're not new to this, you can fast forward this step. I'm just keeping this in here for the beginners who want to know exactly how you do it, how you position the enchiladas. I just put them all in a row and then I put four on the side. And I stuff them kind of thick because when they heat up, they will melt down a lot and kind of flatten, so. And like I said, this enchilada sauce is very mild, so you don't have to worry about it being too hot. I do know in California, they sell New Mexico chili in the packets hot, so be careful. I guess it depends where you live. Where I live, I have not seen it in Southern Nevada at any grocery store I've been to. They don't carry the New Mexico hot chili. So I always have to use the mild. But you, like I said, you can get it online also. And the New Mexico chili is also sold at those um, international stores or those um, Hispanic markets. So this is the last of it. Now I did have a little bit of extra meat, so I kind of squeezed in a couple more, but your 12 tortillas will be perfectly fine. And you know what? If you're not comfortable using the um, New Mexico chili sauce, you can just use the La Victoria or whatever brand enchilada sauce. You don't have to make this, but I would highly recommend trying it because it is really yummy. It tastes very authentic. So now we're gonna top this with our sauce. Now make sure when you top it, you just lightly coat these. You don't want to soak the top just because you have the sauce. You can always save the sauce for something else. But if you over pour, they do get soggy. So I would just lightly coat them. And then I'm, I'm putting some cheese on the top. Topping this with a uh, cheddar and jack. I think this is actually a marble cheese that I bought. Sometimes I buy a separate jack and cheddar and mix it together, but um, once in a while we get the marbled also. Now I'm adding sliced olives. And like I said, all the, op all the toppings, I mean, the sky's the limit. If you like tomatoes, jalapenos, you can add those on there too, onion, green onion. I'm just adding these olives and cilantro. I diced up some cilantro, so I'm gonna top it with that as well. And again, my vegan tip for my daughter, you can definitely do the same exact recipe with jackfruit. So now we're gonna cover this with foil and bake it in the oven for 30 minutes at 375. Now I've removed the foil and now I'm going to bake this again for another 15 minutes, but you can tell it's pretty much done. I just like to brown the top a little bit. And voila, we're done. Some delicious enchiladas. Add a dollop of sour cream to the top and serve it with some yummy rice and beans. Stay tuned for some future videos. I'll have the rice and beans in a separate recipe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you hit that like button and stay tuned for future videos. Take care.